Hello, my furniture friends. Welcome back to Salvaged by K. Scott. I'm Katie, and today I'm diving into a furniture flipping project that will hopefully take these nightstands from oops back to wow. These have been painted in a very, let's say vibrant shade of blue. And while we love a bold color choice, the finish on here leaves a lot to be desired. But fear not, we are going to transform these nightstands from garage sale gone wrong to more of a classic Pottery Barn inspired look with a faux finish that will have you doing a double take. are a super popular design that I'm starting to see out at the thrift stores and on Facebook Marketplace all the time, but they're also still widely available new from major furniture retailers. So that tells me they're a good classic traditional design that works well in a lot of different spaces. The issue with them is that a lot are that newer kind of papery veneer that just doesn't hold up to the abuse we all put our bedside tables through and the MDF tops start to bubble or swell. Some of them, like this set, do have a layer of real wood veneer over top of the MDF and particle board surfaces, but they didn't hold up too well either. So if these things are going to need a good makeover every few years to keep them looking good inside someone's home instead of in the landfill, well, that's what we're going to do. These have a modern drawer stopping system that keeps the drawers from pulling all the way out. It's a safety feature. It's just a little plastic tab under each one that catches on the bottom lip of the drawer. And all you have to do is just kind of stick your hand up in there and hold it down a little bit while you pull the drawer out over top. This double knob solution that I guess people do when they can't find the right size handle at the hardware store drives me absolutely bonkers when I see it. These knobs aren't something that I can ever see myself reusing, so I'll just pop them into a bag and drop them off at the Habitat Restore the next time I drive by, and I'll show you how easy it is to find something to fit properly in a little bit. Paper clip and a nail file. Thank you. I vacuumed out all the crumbs and dust from the drawers and inside the frames and then sprayed each surface, including the insides, with some simple green. This is a heavy duty cleaner and degreaser that's going to get everything clean and break up any grease or oils that could be sitting on here that I don't want to be grinding down into the surface with my sander. Once everything had dried, I put some 180 grit sandpaper onto my little detail sander to try and start smoothing out all the little bubbles in the top coat, the drips and brush strokes in the paint, and all the old dents and scratches on the top that this blue was attempting to hide. Whoever painted these did it with a lot of care, but they made a few mistakes. They didn't use a primer, which is why the color is patchy and the paint is coming off easily, which is good for me. The drips and the bubbly poly are also pretty typical beginner boo-boos that I know I've definitely made at least once in my furniture painting career. So while it's not pretty, I can totally appreciate the effort to try and extend the life of these tables. And it worked for its previous owner for a time, and that's all that really matters. On the curved trim spots around the top and the bottom, I popped this foam interface pad onto my sander to help the sandpaper conform around those spots instead of just grinding it flat against the hard face plate. I hadn't really intended on completely stripping this back to bare when I started sanding, but it all came off so easily that that's pretty much what happened. Definitely not necessary for the finish I'm gonna do though. I'm 
I'm going to be doing a faux wood finish on these, which may seem a little silly at this point with all of the real wood now in front of me, but I promise that it's the best choice in this case. The mahogany veneer that's over the large flat panels of particle board on the sides and MDF on the top is super thin. And if I keep sanding it enough to restain it, I'm just gonna run out of veneer. I'll blow right through it to the substrate underneath. It also doesn't wrap around the edges on the top or on the drawers. They're all just exposed MDF, which I can't stain at all, but I'm going to make it look like wood, I promise. With all the sanding dust cleaned up, I got my primer ready to go. This shellac base primer does all the things I'm going to need on this project. It's gonna seal in any red tannins or the natural oils and pigments in the mahogany so it doesn't bleed up through my new finish. And it's going to seal up and make kind of a candy coating over the raw MDF pieces so they don't absorb any moisture and start to swell or expand. This is pretty stinky stuff. So something that you wanna wear a respirator with and use in a well-ventilated area. And it needs to be cleaned up with ammonia or denatured alcohol. So I like to just use a cheap foam roller that I can toss out instead of messing with any of that in my laundry sink. I rolled on two coats and this stuff dries fast enough that usually as soon as you've finished your first coat, you can go back to the beginning and start the second. And then I left it to cure for a few hours before I continued. I gave the primer a quick wipe down with some 400 grit just to knock back any roller texture and make sure that each surface was super smooth. And then I decided to fill in a few more noticeable gaps with some paintable latex caulking so they don't stick out so badly. I just squeezed a bead of it along each seam and then used my finger to push it in and also remove any excess. Sometimes a damp rag is handy to get a nice smooth finish on here too. To find some new hardware for these, instead of the weird double knob situation, all I need to do is measure the existing holes from center to center. The center of one hole to the center of the other hole is how handles are typically measured. These are three and a quarter inches, so I can go over to Amazon and search 3.25 inch handles and either pick something I like that will work, or I could get myself some of these adjustable handles, which might be how I go. Once the caulking was dry, I got out the base coat for my new faux wood finish. This is Wooden Primer by Retika, and I've used it on a few different projects now. It's a heavy duty wood colored paint that actually has some recycled wood fibers mixed right in. I've also done a few faux wood looks with just some matte furniture paints in a similar color that worked out great too. This stuff can be sprayed, but I wanted to brush it on so that I could use the added texture of the brush strokes to my advantage to start building that new wood grain. I brushed a coat over each surface and then immediately brushed back through it, going back and forth in the direction that I wanted the new grain to go. This is gonna take two coats to get full enough coverage for me to move on to the next step. But when you're working on something like this with so many hard edges, you really wanna keep a close eye for any drips or just buildup of the product that really easily accumulates on the corners. When I was finished with the first coat, I tucked my brush into a plastic bag, waited about two hours for it to dry, and then came back and put the second coat on the same way. tiny bit streaky with some of that white primer peeking through but that's actually a good thing in this case because it's going to add to the natural color variations that you'd find in real wood. The next morning I decided to get straight into things in my pajamas because I can <laughs> and I'm going to add the color now that will really sell this wood look. Another Reticket product here, their gel stain in the color Driftwood. But again, I've had really good luck with regular hardware store products for this as well. I really like Bear's water-based stains from Home Depot to do this with because they're kind of like a tinted glaze too that dries nice and fast. I'm going to be applying this with a regular paintbrush 
but I'm also going to be using this crusty rough sweeper broom and a big fluffy deck staining or masonry brush. This step is actually pretty fun and totally up to your own artistic interpretation. So try not to overthink it too much. Basically, I'm going to apply a layer of the stain over each surface. Just work on a small section at a time with this. And once I've got it on, I'll brush through it again, getting it all going in the right direction. And then I can brush through it with the coarse broom to kind of scrape some of the color off and leave some varying wood grain textures. And then I'll just sweep over everything again really lightly with the big fluffy brush to pick up any excess product off the corners and also just blend out the harsher spots a bit. This glaze stays wet and workable for a few minutes, so you do need to move quickly, but you don't really have to rush. And if you don't like your first attempt, you've got some time to brush it back out and go again. Again, you do need to be super careful to watch the edges and corners because it will build up as you're brushing back and forth. And having that big accumulation of color on those spots is a dead giveaway from afar that this is an illusion. I worked on all the horizontal grain first and masked off the sections that I wanted the grain to run vertically with some delicate painter's tape so I can keep each section of wood separated, again, to sell the illusion. Instead of having all the grain on the whole table going in the same direction, basically all the grain is running in the same direction it was on the original piece underneath, if that makes sense. This layer also needs about two hours to dry in between coats, just like the wooden primer. So after those two hours had passed, I moved all of my tape over to the opposite surfaces and brushed on my vertical grain sections. Thank you. 
the last step is to protect my new aged oak art pieces and I'm gonna stick with the retake it theme and use their poly take it top coat this is actually an exterior and marine grade sealer that they make that is low VOC so not stinky you can work with it indoors and it's non-yellowing and mold and mildew resistant what more could you want I'm using their matte sheen too, so I can keep that really soft bare wood feel. I washed my brush out when I finished the stain process, so it was still a little bit damp, and I used that to brush on a total of three layers of this. It's a pretty thin consistency and levels itself out really well, so again, make sure you're going back and checking every surface so you can catch any drips before they start to set up. But because we're working on a natural wood grain texture and look, there's no need to be too fussy or precise. My adjustable handles from Amazon came in right on time. So I'm just gonna pop these bolts through from the inside of the drawers, slide the bar handle over on the outside and then tighten them up into place. little reminder of the bold blue guys that I started with and here is my pottery barn inspired faux finished version of them. Like I said, these are the type of furniture that's probably going to go through a bunch of different facelifts in its lifetime. These are already on version number three, and I think that's an incredible thing. I'm pretty sure they're more likely to find a new home now with this look than they were in their former blue outfits. But when the time comes to freshen them up again, I hope someone will take just as much care. Thank you so much for watching along today. I'm going to leave a playlist of my other faux wood finished pieces here for you to watch next if you want. And I will catch you all next time.